Department of Ophthalmology at New York Presbyterian uh, actually combines sort of the traditional three-legged stool of academic medicine, and that is clinical care. We want to be the best clinicians, taking care of patients in the best way, providing them with the, the best ability to see, to defeat diseases that we couldn't use to defeat. We train. We have a probably an obligation to train. And we don't only train clinicians or scientists, but we hopefully train leaders for tomorrow. Uh, so that's a calling that, that really is the heart of everything we do. And the final piece of what we do within ophthalmology and every academic department here is we do research. We try to find the next great uh, advancement, the next blockbuster drug, uh, the next way to take care of patients. And so it's the melding together of research, education, and clinical care that is a hallmark of all our departments, ophthalmology included. I've been an ophthalmologist for about 25 years, and over that time, there's been evolutions in virtually every phase of ophthalmology. Uh, the glaucoma has basically been reborn in how we medically treat it. Uh, the drugs that we used when I began practicing are almost never used now because better, uh, newer, uh, less side effect uh, medicines uh, have taken over. Uh, surgical interventions for glaucoma, cataracts, uh, macular degeneration uh, have become the mainstay. Uh, new medications for things that were almost untreatable, like macular degeneration, uh, now are commonly uh, treated uh, and blindness prevented. So there's been a, a nice shift in a relatively short period of time, uh, in just a couple decades, uh, from uh, how we did it to what we do now. We can touch on a variety of different aspects of ophthalmic research. Uh, I would say in retinal disease, probably the biggest advances over the last decade have been in macular degeneration. It was a disease that 10 years ago was almost uniformly blinding uh, and affected Caucasian Americans uh, disproportionately. And uh, it was really a hand-holding disease because we had very little to offer these patients. Uh, there's now been a variety of medications that have come uh, into play over the last decade that can halt the disease in most cases from severe vision loss, uh, something that we couldn't prevent in the past. I think the next step will be figuring out how to make those medications uh, easier to deliver with less side effects and perhaps uh, that will last, you know, one treatment would last a lifetime. In glaucoma, uh, there are some uh, very good surgical alternatives for glaucoma. I think the next step uh, will be uh, safer surgeries. In uh, corneal diseases, uh, we've made a big step in corneal transplantations in the last couple decades. The way we did corneal transplantation two decades ago just almost is never done uh, today. Uh, I think the next step will be making that even better, and it's had a quick evolution. Cataracts, actually the number one cause of blindness around the world, not here in the U.S., but around the world, uh, also have seen a, a, a very nice progression of safer and safer uh, surgical techniques. I think prevention in all these fronts will probably be where we'll head in the near future.